Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. As I always say, if you are new here, thank you so much for coming along. Please give us a like and subscribe. It's how we grow. And for the regulars, the heartbeat of the podcast, thank you so much for coming back. I absolutely love you. Um, the show's been growing. We're doing great things. We're getting a lot of great guests on. There's some great guests coming as well. So make sure you keep in tuned um, for what we have coming up because it is a big year for the Unlaced Podcast. So I can't thank you enough for your support. Now, obviously, everyone here knows that I love my football, soccer. I used to be a soccer player and this time of year is the pointy end of season for all the leagues, all the big trophies, all the major trophies, which we had to dissect and discuss with none other than the lovely Kat Sasso. Kat, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, appreciate. Appreciate you coming on. It's... uh, we actually did some work together the other week on Dabble. Yes, that was like, what, 15 minutes, 20 15 minutes? 15 minutes. That was sick, though. Yeah, on cheap. a live stream. It was so good. How did you get involved with them? You were, like, straight into their main ad. Um, I don't know. I think – so I think Olan just – they asked him because he was doing the ad for them uh, and he, like, okay. put my name forward and he was like, hey, cat's sick. So uh, now it's like, hey, how are you? Right. Okay. Just got put in a really ugly shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it was a great ad. Yeah, it was a great ad. Yeah. Coffee, coffee. Yeah. Yeah. For those who haven't seen it, go on Dabble. It's it's a great platform. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's yep. terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, for those that don't know you, obviously you are a football presenter. You've I been am. covering football for a while on a, from a social media perspective. You're now doing some great things from a podcast point of view. Yes. So can you share a little bit about yourself for for the listeners who aren't aware of you? So I've been doing football presenting since about July, August last year. Um, And I work on a show called The Early Kickoff on Bean Sports, which you can find on KO and Foxtel, just quietly. (laughs) (laughs) I was just cheeky plug. Plug. Um, So I'm doing that and I've just like, um, yeah, I've grown up with football. Like I've never played it before. So if you ever saw me me kicking a ball, it's so embarrassing. Like everyone like in the office in Sydney, because I work in Sydney, everyone freaks out because like I'll pick up a ball and I'll try and kick it around. It's like, can you stop? It's so embarrassing. So I've never played football, but I grew up like my dad's Chilean. And one of my dad's brother-in-laws is Argentinian. So I've grown up in a family like full of football. Like my grandfather played football. Like everyone in my dad's side of the family has played football. Mm. So I grew up with it always. I was never really too interested as a kid. But as I got a bit older, I think it was like the turning point would have been like the 2014 World Cup for me. Or like even the 2010 World Cup was pretty full on as well. And I was like, whoa. And then oh. since then, it's just been straight up misery for like, it's just all downhill. Once, Down, you, get, once yeah. you get into football, it's all you're, downhill. You're embedded, aren't you? Yes. We were joking off air, like how ridiculous your knowledge is on all the leagues in the world. It's I mean, it's part, part of your job, but it's like pretty insane, yeah. the levels that you're going yeah, to. Yeah, especially like working in it now. It's like you have to be across everything, especially because like with work, I'm working on like the Bundesliga, Liga, Championship, like all, I'm working across like championship. everything. Championship, you're coming to, yeah. it's a good There's league like to cover. There's like so many things that are covered. So it's like, you kind of just got to know bits and pieces about everything. And like mm. every week, something new, like I've got so much information in my brain that I don't know what to do with it. So wow. I just like spit out little bits of info just to like, just to flex on people sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you did that to me. I did. Yeah, multiple times. I'm, I'm a bit nervous about that happening in this podcast no, no, as well. No, 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 you can because it'll be funny. But <laughs> um, what's like, what, what is your end goal with what you're doing? Like, do you want to be like a full fledged football presenter or um, do you just want to be shooting shots on TikTok at footballers and oh, well, um, talking about the game and all that sort of stuff? Um, like, I don't know. To be honest, like, I, this was never even like a thing for me. Like, I was studying osteo, still am. I kind of deferred for this semester. Um, and then Claude's, who is like my boss technically, he came up to me one day because I was in Sydney and he was like, oh, let's catch up for a coffee. And then he was like, have you ever done football presenting before? And I was like, no. He's like, you should. And I was like, okay. So I've gone into it and I was like, wow. So I don't really know necessarily what the end game is. Like mm. end game, probably I would love to be like Tara Rushton one day. Wow. I actually Tara's did a, your idol. Yeah, she's so Shout cool. Shout out Tara Rushton. I actually love her. Like I did a shoot with, um, I did a Rebel Nike shoot with her a few little while ago. Mm. And she's just the coolest human being ever. Yeah. She's so lovely. She's so good at her job And I saw too. her at the Sydney-Melbourne game last week. Okay. And she was like, oh, my God, Kat. And I was like fangirling because I was like, oh, my God, stop. <laughs> well, I think there's a real possibility for you. I mean, there's yeah. so much stuff in this game. Around, like, I think the best part about Australia's football ecosystem is the Matildas. Yeah, 100%. And, like, the World Cup's coming up. Yeah. Which means Kat Sasso is rising. Kat Sasso is on the rise. Yeah, on the rise. We're, Are you going to do anything around the World Cup? I've got a few things lined up. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to speak about That's them fine, yet, but, but I've got a few things lined so up. So stuff's going to be happening. Stuff will be happening. I will actually be based in Auckland for the World Cup. Whoa. Yeah. So New Zealand. Not allowed to say why, but yes, I'll be doing <laughs> well, that. We so can I'm presume. Very, <laughs> I'm very excited. You just describe what you do, um, so... I'm, yeah, I'm so excited, but it's like, we've got a home world cup and I'm going to be in New Zealand. Yeah. What do you think the Matilda's chances are of winning the world cup? Honestly, I'm so optimistic. Like Mm. women's football in this country, like 
I all I've said it for it's almost like it's kind of like the USA. Like the USA men's, they're like they're all right, they're good, mm. but the women are just like Better. top tier, next level, mm. and that's kind of how I feel like football in this country is. But I don't think the Matildas get enough respect. No, nah, because it's uh, probably I don't know how long the, have the Matildas been like a top three nation in the world. Like a probably a while now. Has they it been a long time? Went through, they kind of went through like a dip mm. recently, maybe the last year or two, because they've had issues with coaching and whatever, but. They've got the potential to be really, really good. Like we've got Sam Kerr. She's the best footballer in the world. Yeah, there's no one better than her. She's scary good. Like it's it's next level. Yeah, she what she won recently. She won the, the well, football writers, yeah, football uh, writers player of the year. Which yeah. Erling Haaland won that in the for the men. Which is like you're putting so Sam Kerr, same... Sam Kerr, and Erling Haaland are on the same like level, essentially. Yeah. So it's just crazy. I think people don't really understand how big that is for a country like us. Yeah. Like we just, we're just like, oh yeah, it's Sam Kerr. Like that's so cool. But it's Sam Kerr. Yeah. She's massive. <laughs> she you can't, go to Europe, can't she's next up. I'm the biggest Sam Kerr fan. I've always ever. wanted to get her on this show. Cause I think it I think. It would be so cool. Yeah. She's like, I think she's going to make females want to play football. 100%. 100%. Like she's that big. She's placed for Chelsea. Yeah. She probably should have won the Ballon d'Or. I think she came second or third yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah. Second she, last yeah. Year. She was like yeah. really close. She might Get it? Like she might have an opportunity to win it after this well, season. Well, I think maybe this season she might because Alexia Puteas she won it last last year and she's been pretty much injured for like almost the whole season. Oh, well, fingers crossed because so. that's that's unbelievable. I know. She I think that it. that gets overlooked in this country. Like 100%, we have one yeah. of the best female footballers in the world, and the money and investment in the female game is significantly growing. Yeah. Like it if it was a to. stock, I would invest yeah. in it because it's clearly getting bigger. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of, we spoke of Premier League women's there with Sam Kerr, but we have to start with the Premier League in general. We do, yes. You're a bit of a sad Chelsea fan. I am, especially today. It's been a nightmare. Yeah. Man, you beat you. Where, where do you see, like, what? After Chelsea have spent eight hundred million dollars in a season, is got it, a new owner. It's just so embarrassing. Three, they've had three managers this year. Like, how do you think it can stabilize for next season? Well, I think I don't know. I don't know if this is actually confirmed yet, but we've got Pock for next yeah, season. Yeah, I, th- right? well, I think it's. I think it's confirmed. I think so. I'm not hundred percent sure to be honest because I actually haven't this. been paying any attention. One to them nil, recently. Jake. Yes. Yes. He knows more than I do. <laughs> yes. I haven't been paying much attention to them as yeah. of recent. I'll be honest, but I think. Frank Lampard needs to go and never come back. <laughs> but he's a legend. He's a legend. But it's like, it's one of those things when legends come back to a club. And this is how I felt about like Xavi coming back to Barca. I was like, either he's going to do so well or it's going to be a fucking shit show. Mm. And it's just going to tarnish his legacy. And that's what I kind of, that's why it's kind of like, I don't know if I, if I like legends coming back to the club to coach them. Cause it's no. like, you were such a good player while you were there. But if you're not a good coach, like no one really cares about it's that. It's never you know? worked. Yeah. It's never worked. Like in, the, I don't know, in the Premier League, it's a legend coming to coach clubs never worked. No. They've never been a better coach than they were a player, which is, it's crazy it when you think about it. So yeah, I'm just like, can't wait for this season to just be done. And then next season, I think it'll just be a matter of like, just rebuilding. I don't think they're going to get anywhere for the next season, maybe two seasons. I think it's just a matter of like rebuilding this squad now. Like we've got so many good players mm. that have just got no idea what's going on because our coaching staff's just stupid dismantled back rooms i don't know what's going on but it's just the whole club at the moment is just shambles and like understandably so you know you had like the whole russia thing with like the owner being Mm. yeah it was like sanctions on the club no money like they had to pay for buses for that with their own money like that's what i think has probably been the biggest issue is the fact that there's been so much going on and so much change happening in the club that it's like you can't have a consistent season like for example manchester city is one of those clubs where like they've had consistency which is why they're so good bayern is another one of those where when you have a club that's got consistency they do so well mm. but clubs that don't have consistency it's like barca and you know 2015 prior to that consistency makes a club good yeah and they just haven't had that that's a good point. Do you know what? Actually, my opinion of Chelsea, I reckon what? they're three players away from fighting for the Premier League. You reckon? With Poch. Yeah. I think <laughs> if they get a striker, uh, another midfielder, because Jorginho was a pretty big loss, mm-hmm. and then probably a, a central defender. Yeah. I think they're closer than people think. I heard Gary Neville say this, and so I'm copying his comments, <laughs> but I thought about it, and I'm like, actually, yeah, they, their squad is We've ridiculous. Got a good squad. It's it is insanely like good and so deep. Getting them to work. Yeah. Which Poch could do in a preseason. Yeah. So that's why I think maybe, but. My, um, obviously the biggest, arguably the biggest surprise of this season with the biggest heartache is mm, Arsenal. So um, sad. did, were you one of those or one of the many that 
was seeing Arsenal choke in in a no, sense. I was so optimistic. Like I thought really thought that they were going to do it. I wanted and them I to. have been so I was so upset when they didn't cuz I was like are you kidding me? Like again. <laughs> Messi win it again. Yeah. Come on, give me a break. Yeah. That I mean for 30 games they were unbelievable. They were incredible. Which is why it sucks. Yeah. It's just interesting to see how like from the start of the season to now and you can see it across the board in Europe how a club can like start the season so well and you're like, oh my God, yeah, they're going to win the league. And all of a sudden it's like the wheels start falling off and like, it's like, what's happened? Mm. How do these, how does this happen? Like nothing's really changed for you. What has happened? Yeah. Yeah. Well, eight, eight games, as we saw, eight games in the Premier League is a long time to, for things to go yeah. really bad. Yeah. The Man City were relentless though. Like yeah. they didn't stop. But I, you know what I was impressed with Arsenal is that they're young players going forward. Yeah. Like Saka, Martinelli. Yeah, done such a great job with that squad though, given everything mm. and given that people kind of ridden off Arsenal, yeah, I think he's time. done such a good job. And Saka signing like a new contract as well. How long huge. did he sign for? I don't know. But like long, long-term deal, that yeah. was, which would make sense. I think he's probably like one of the best young players in England. Mm. You wouldn't want to get rid of him. You wouldn't want to let him go. No, no way. And then Odegaard, I think probably been, he could be in like people's teams of the season. Like mm. he's been that good. I, think I don't I think it's their fault. FPL. Did you? I think he would have killed it this year. he was cooking it, so I got him out, and then I was like, F- cooking it. <laughs> I was so upset. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gold. And Martinelli, too. I think yeah. so. My thing with Arsenal, and it's probably been well covered, is their uh, defensive issues. Like without mm. Saliba, it's hurt. Yeah. They don't. That's what's let them down, I think. 100%. And Maybe it's experience. Like, too. Again, like they were so consistent for such a long time. And then, you know, once you have those issues, the wheels do start falling off, and it yeah. shows. And, it's just sad that like they weren't far enough ahead because they were at one point. They were what like ten points almost. Yeah, that, clear that's why it's at so. One point, which is why it sucks so bad because it's like you've got that much of a lead and now it's just like you've just yeah. It's just got. There's this. There's this. I'm gonna get this wrong, but there's some sort of stat going around that the amount of days Arsenal were on top was like in the hundreds, and then the amount of days that they haven't been was like less than like three weeks, and they've lost. It's just just insane. <sighs> Like, do you know what I mean? They're it's pointy end of the season. I'm not even an Arsenal fan. My best friend Alex is, but I'm not. And I'm just like, it hurts my soul. Yeah, Arsenal fans are spiteful too. Like AFTV yeah. right now is yeah. the greatest thing to watch ever. Yeah. They well, just my, turn one on of my each cousins, other. her boyfriend, he's an Arsenal supporter. And every single time I see him, he's just ripping me for Chelsea. And I'm like, I'm not <laughs> going to say anything because like, I've got like a weird soft spot for Arsenal. I don't know why. Mm. Just, I'll leave it. But yo, boy, how? <laughs> you're a weird, are you for, I've got, I think I've just got a weird soft spot because of Alexis Sanchez, you know. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Any club that he's played at, I've got a weird soft spot Man, for. you then. So you're blocked. Uh, You've got three of the big no. top four. <laughs> no. Uh, but one of Manny's rivals that's arguably had probably, the, in my opinion, one of the best seasons ever is Newcastle. Because mm-hmm. they signed smart, they made a cup final, and they've qualified for Champions League. How long Wilson? Do you do you think do you rate him? Honestly, yeah. Do you think he? So I had this question on the basis my, that he's getting me points on my FPL every single week. Ah, uh, yeah, he's good. He scored. He scored a lot of goals. Sorry. Him and him and um, Trippier as well. Trippier, yeah, like, player, the player. They're the just year. all round like. There's been it's just like an upheaval. Yeah, and it's just been so good, and it's like it's very clear that like when you've got a club that has no money versus when they end up getting money. Yeah, it's so clear how important having money is in a yeah, sport. Yeah, correct. It's it kind of sucks to a point. Because it's like if you don't have money, there's no chance. But when money comes in and there's investment put in, it's clear that a club like Newcastle that has obviously not really done the mm. best recently mm. can go f- in one season and just flip like that. Yeah, from investment. Mm. But they didn't. They uh, they spent money, but they spent smart. Like they yeah. bought Isak. They didn't do what Chelsea did. No, they bought. But that's what Botman. happens when you don't have Americans buying you. Yeah, correct. But so they're, they're, I think they know that they've got a <laughs> small niche of players they can get without yeah. trying to break the bank. But now they've got Champions League. Imagine the sell they can have to get Huge. attract players. I think next year for the Champions League as well is going to be massive because you've got quite a few clubs that have like not, either not been in the Champions League for a while or like mm. they have never played Champions League before. For example, like Union Berlin in Germany. Yeah. They've never played Champions League before. They've only played like what? I think it's like four seasons of top tier football now. Wow. Two, three, maybe. They were they were invincible. So well. it's like it's either them or Freiburg. Both of them have never played Champions League before. <laughs> wow. So next next year's gonna be huge for the Champions League, I think. That's that's pretty insane. I also think Eddie Howe, the coach, yeah. he's like I reckon he had big pressure on him at the start of the year because it was so much investment. 100% because it's like when you've got so much money being put in, you need to produce results. Straight away. Like you can't, it's like, you can't, it's like Chelsea. 
you've had so much money put in and you've done absolutely nothing with it. Mm. But I think the biggest issue with that was getting rid of Tommy Tuchel. Oh, yeah. I don't. You, they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have got no. rid of him? Who got rid of him? What do you mean? Chelsea? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, but, oh, you're talking from a Chelsea I'm perspective. I'm talking from a Chelsea perspective. Oh, right. Okay. Just so asking about him. Newcastle. But, yeah, I know. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just going back to Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, okay. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, he's coaching by. If you're not. He yeah. He's buzzing now. Well, if they lose the league this weekend, he's not going to be buzzing. Do you, reckon, lose do, you his reckon, job again. do you reckon they would get rid of him? If you, do you reckon that, or they'll I keep him? I don't know if they would get rid of him. I don't think so. Because they had a bit of like, they had a like New Year slump kind of, and that's yeah. what's kind of killed them now mm. because they had that momentum up until then and then after that because they were top of the table in January. Yeah. Like before the break as well. So like going from that to now two points behind Dortmund is like... <sighs> Do you think Mane will leave? And if if yeah. so, there's like Premier League suitors are circling. But do you I think it's it's a, a real feel thing? Like, I don't know if he's going to go back to the Premier League. You know what I, I mean? Like, if I was him, I wouldn't. But yeah. it seems like the if, club's do you think interested. He's at the level to go back to the Premier League, though. I don't know. I haven't watched enough Bundesliga this year. But yeah, I don't know. It's, he's, he's pretty good scary. Player. Good. Like he's a ever since he left Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool's but I, I gone do down. feel like there are certain players that are good in the Premier League, but then they go elsewhere and it's like their next level. Mm. I feel like other places in Europe, he'd probably be better suited. Yeah, but Spain again, maybe, who knows. Potentially. But I don't I don't know. I know there was a big fallout with uh, two punch children. Punch-ons. Yeah, the punch-on with Sane and stuff. Never hear that. Like, sorry, soccer. what is going on? You never hear that. Like Just teammates hooked, punching on as well? his teammate, who's like Jesus. young. And like, <laughs> like Sane Mane as well. Something. I read that and I was like, there's no way. Like yeah. there is absolutely no way. Temper. I'm Just sorry. Got one. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so here for it. Though, yeah, yeah, I loved it. I'm like more of that. What happened on the field next time so you could see it. <laughs> like, like Ted Lasso, have yeah. a punch on in the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah. Are you watching Ted Lasso, by I the way? I finished it. Oh, you mean to? Was that last episode? I don't the know last if that episode? was the last episode. I hope not. I think there might be one more because that was 11. Oh, man. For those that have not watched Ted Lasso, right? have you watched it? Oh, man, it's the greatest it's so show good. ever. I don't even know what's going on in it. No, I'm so it's confused, so but it's good. so addictive. It's the best show yeah, and the fact that they're getting like actual people in the like Premier they're League, getting actual pundits as well, to be huge. involved. Like they've yeah. got Thierry Henry yeah, on they, there. <laughs> they had Pep in the last they had, episode. Yeah, they they've Pep. got like the Saturday talk shows, people yeah. talking about AFC Richmond, and it's just like consistently they've got such cool people in it. Like I'm sorry, and they kind of what? mirror players in the show off yeah. real life. Like Zava is Zlatan. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, what's it called? Roy Kent Jamie is Tart is um Jack Gre- Grealish. Yeah, Grealish. Yeah. I, I, you know, I only realised that the last episode. Really? When he went back to Man City. Are you did, like, sir? Yeah, I was just like the hair. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> but they make him out to be a bit of a bimbo, and I'm like Grealish yeah. is a bit. Yeah. Interesting. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> Um, well, my team I want to talk about, and I actually heard this on the podcast you were on with Claude's mm. talking about how United had a better season than Arsenal, despite right. Arsenal dominating for most of the year. Because obviously, man, you Champions League and they're in the FA Cup final. Mm. And what's the other? Which is huge. Like, it's just kind of, they've, I they, feel like they've gone really under the radar this season. Yeah. Like they haven't, like, especially with like after Ronaldo left, it was just like exponential up. Yeah. Yeah, I it's think crazy. They've, like they've gotten rid of that dead weight, and it's like, see you fucking later, let's go. <laughs> and it's like they've done so well. So after you support that. the Ronaldo leaving decision? You think yeah. that was the right thing for the club? Yeah, yeah. I do. I, I think, think it's so. so hard because he's. I'm a messy girl, and I will take any opportunity I can to slander that man. But I can acknowledge that he is like one of the best footballers in the world. Not the best right now, but still one of the best yeah. of all time. Yeah. But I think it's so hard because it's like he wasn't really performing all that well when he was in Italy at Juve. And it's like, at some point you kind of have to like realize for yourself, like, cause he's a bit of a delusional girl, you know what he, I mean? Delusional girly. He, he doesn't want to believe no, that. No, he doesn't want to believe that he's slowing down, but it's like you at some point have to acknowledge the fact that like, you're like nearly 40 years old. <laughs> you are slowing down. And even Zlatan as well, like Zlatan, like he's the best of the best, whatever, but he, yeah. I think to, like deep down, you know that you're slowing down. You know that your body's slowing down. You know that you're not recovering from injuries. You know that you're not a, as fast. Like you need to acknowledge that. And like, you're not going to be playing Premier League. Mm-hmm. You, you can't like, it gets to a point where it's like, you need to acknowledge that for yourself. Like you're making yourself look like an absolute fuckwit. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Do you know why I think Ronaldo's like his mind was gone? Is because he was what did he score like twenty goals the year before yeah. at like thirty seven? So I think he genu- and don't get me wrong, I think it was the right decision because something was off, and he can't play every week at thirty eight no. or whatever he is in the Premier League. He's still like in incredible shape. Yeah. I don't even know what he's been doing in Saudi. I'll be real, like I haven't. I haven't no, I think he's. Yeah, I just but, follow him on Instagram. I'm yeah. not going to watch Saudi football <laughs> games. Like, come on, sorry. 
<laughs> no disrespect. It might be good soon, but like I'm, just, I'm not that. It'll invested. be good when they pay six hundred million for Leo Messi. Yeah. Well, anyway, that, um, well, yeah, that's another topic. That's another topic that yeah. we need to touch on. But yeah, back to Chrissy. Um, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> back to Chrissy. Oh, you know him, do you? <laughs> oh, fuck. Where did you meet him? <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but yeah, it's 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 a bit of a shit situation because like you go back to your first club and you like you want it to be like this whole fairy tale thing and it's just like you fucked it. Yeah. Do, you, do actually this is a, this is a funny one, but do you f- still find him attractive at like thirty eight? Because he still yeah he still looks twenty five. He's hot. Yeah, has he had For work? Sure. Has he had work? Hundred percent. He's got Botox. As does he? I want to know. Who, I don't have the eye. Ronaldo, give me your Botox lady's number because I want to know who it is. Oh, he's injecting. His forehead which... doesn't move. <laughs> Maybe but helps I don't know him. whether it's just because like he he's probably just got tactic, like this like, like crazy like skincare routine or something. So maybe it's not Botox. I'm this is allegedly Botox. I'm right. not saying that it is Botox, but it could be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Ah, uh, well, fair enough. Well, my the reason why I want to talk about Man U because I think obviously Erling Haaland's clearly the signing of the season after mm. the year he's had and we'll go into it but I actually think Casemiro has been like one yeah. of the best signings he's been of the very year. surprising well I, I didn't think he would surprising. like when he is not in Man U's team yeah. it is so different yeah yeah that's how you know how good he is yeah 100% like he like, just makes such just, a massive I just, difference I don't know I didn't even think that it was gonna work I'll be real like when they announced that I was like there's no way. I was the same, but then I thought about it. I'm like I'm stupid for thinking that because I'm like he won five Champions League. I mean Man U's kind of where like the unwanted Real Madrid players go, right? Yeah, which I'll take them because they're pretty good. They're I mean, just, they don't usually work. Yeah. Though, that's the problem. <laughs> like Di Maria, like did not work. Did not work, but now it's like he's such a good footballer. He's the it's, best. Now he's in Italy and like had all these injuries and whatever, but he's still like so good mm. for his age as well. And that's the thing, like aging footballers coming to a side like Manchester United or whatever, it just generally doesn't work, which is so, which is why this is so surprising that it's actually done something. Th- what is he, 30, 31? I mean, he made a massive difference. And I think probably the last sort of 10 weeks have maybe overshadowed how good of a season Rashford had. But his form for three quarters Rashford of the season is, is like 100% one of the best in yeah. England. Yeah, I think he's he, yeah. up there. On his day, he's, he, could, yeah. he could be the best player in the league. That's how good he yeah. is. But he, he, Changed the trajectory of Man U season 100%. when he got on that hot run. Like he yeah. was just scoring every week. Started doing like you know yeah the yeah whatever. That's gone like he's global. a king. He's a king. Yeah, I back him. Yeah, I love him too. What about Liverpool? <sighs> I hate Liverpool. Do you, I'm so I, sorry to well, all, I'm my, a friends, Man U all fan, my friends. All my friends support Liverpool, so like I apologize, but I just can't. I can't no wonder do you it. caught flack on Twitter. You're just calling out these teams like I hate them. Like, yeah. <laughs> but you just said you go for like three teams in the same city. I don't. Chelsea, I guess. No, I was like, I've got, a, I've got a soft spot, but I don't, if if you put Chelsea and Arsenal together, oh, fuck off Arsenal. Like, you uh, know what I mean? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's just sad because like obviously Chelsea was doing shit. If Chelsea was doing well, I'd be like, fuck you, fuck off. Yeah. But because they're doing shit, I'm like, eh, fine. You like I'd rather Arsenal win it than Manchester City, let's be real. So what do you what do you think went wrong for Liverpool? Like if you could put your finger on it, because it was a pretty I poor, actually, they, they kind of resurrected a little bit, almost getting Champions League, but they were bad for I like, don't, like I actually don't even know. I don't actually understand what's happened because mm. it's like they've gone from what they almost won the, what was it, quadruple last, last yeah, season? Yeah, To yeah. literally, n- uh, I have no words because it's just, it's so crazy how things can flip so quickly. Like yeah. from one season to the next, it can go from you're like the best in Europe to this. I'm not going to say that I'm upset about it, but no, it's. I, I I think I think my only reason for them is I think they they lost obviously Mane. Mm. Clearly, when they had that big three, now you realize Mane was like, yeah. maybe he was the big dog because when he left, he's obviously obviously his impact on the squad. It's like very massive. much missing. There's like a I big it was Salah was Sadio like the Mane big dog, filled but, hole there. Yeah, they missed that, and then I think they, from a lot of the reports around Liverpool, they don't really have the depth in midfield. Mm. Like Thiago's yeah. in and out, Fabinho's in and out, and then Henderson getting old. Again, they've got a bit of an aging squad again as well. And then, but they got Arthur Mello on loan, didn't play a minute. Random. So like, ra- so fucking random. Poor like, guy. That guy used to play for Barca. What? And Juventus, didn't he? And yeah, and he was like actually good. So and now they didn't play him a minute. So I reckon they're going to need. To, I reckon they're going to buy a midfielder, um, maybe another striker. Or oh, they got mm. Nunes, obviously. But definitely, but again, probably like a even defender. Darwin, like I feel like he was a bit of a disappointment this season as well. Because mm. we had, like, I know all my friends, we all had such high hopes for him. Like, even with, I've got this I like, love stupid Darwin. Darwin. Like, you know him again. I call all footballers <laughs> by their first names. I can't Darwin. do it. I can't do it with the last names. It's weird. Yeah. The only reason why is because, like, I base a lot of my a lot of my like decisions on FPL mm. solely. I had him in my FPL, and I was like, yes. And then he got 
fucking red card, like the start of the season. I was like, what is this? Took him out and then like did nothing. Yeah, he struggled. He did. But they sometimes strikers when they come to England, they take a time. It does. And I think there's a very, there's a thing with that. It's like there's a transition period which people kind of don't understand. And that's mm. just kind of football in general. Like, just smack the table. <laughs> <laughs> like a transition period which, which is like, People don't understand that certain things do take time and it's not going to be instantaneous. And like you've got a group of men playing on a field that need to work together. And it's mm. like you can't get those things to work overnight. Correct. So it's clear, like obviously he's needed a little bit of like time to kind of yeah. fit in. But There'll be pressure on him next season 100%. though. Like now he's got to he's got to score. Now he's got to like, he's got to pull a finger out. Goal yeah. season, like, <laughs> yeah. Or else you're out. Yeah, like see if I can let. That's cutthroat. Yeah. Like when you're in that team, you're not, you can't no not way. do that. And they're so used to having like Torres, Suarez, Salah. Like they've got great yeah. strikers. So if you don't score at Liverpool. It's football royalty. Yeah. You play for Liverpool, like you automatically are in that kind of. Agreed. Box of football royalty. You can't be playing for Liverpool and being shit. Agreed. <laughs> so but, so if you had high hopes for Arsenal, did you not think City would catch them? I didn't like. Because <sighs> there, there was a big gap. I'm, a bit of, one I'm, point. I'm also a bit of like a delusional girl right. that I was just hoping that they wouldn't. Right, but did, deep down, did you think Deep Man's, down, I was like, they might. Yeah. But I was just like really, really, really op- overly optimistic about the fact that Arsenal would just get it done. They're so good at the end because of the season. Because they did so well for such a long time. I was like, surely you can just like finish mm. it off. Yeah. But obviously not. Can't finish a happy meal. What what, <laughs> what for you about Man City did you like about this season? Because there's so much to like, but when you watch Man City, Pep like- is honestly my favourite coach ever. Yeah, he is, I think, one of, like him, Jose Mourinho, he's one of those ones where, like, you can put him literally anywhere and he will do such a good job. Mm. Like, for example, when he was at Barca and watching the football that they were playing at Barca versus now watching the football that they play at City, it's not the same, it's a bit, it's different, but mm. it works for the league. It yep. works for the environment that they're playing in. Like Pep is always, he's just, he's so good. Yeah. And he's so good at his job and he's so good at building kind of that rapport with his players and like they've got a culture in the club. And it's like Man City's not necessarily a club that you kind of associate with having culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the fact that don't. like, mm-hmm. well, yeah. I mean, do you know what though? In Manchester, people say the real people, the real Mancunians go for Man City, not United. That's weird. But they, they don't have like outside of that. I, I mean, they like don't, they don't have a trophy like cabinet. The well, bandwagon of teams, but that's just me. But their trophy cabinet's bit, the last 10 years, what have they won? Five out of the last six Premier Leagues, mm. which is crazy. And obviously, yeah. Pep's been a huge just part of that. Everything he touches turns to gold. It's just the one thing that he can't get is the, is the Champions League. I know. Which we're going to talk about because yes. we're going to break down the Champions League yeah. final. So stay tuned, folks. But <laughs> I want to like what what I think Pep does well is he's not afraid to change his squad and yeah. refresh big names with like younger or you know new players to keep them mm-hmm. sort of modern and growing. Like the yeah. Cancelo, getting rid of him was a, yeah. was a massive thing. But then it opened up doors for other players. It worked. Harland. But like, like you look at like their squad that's on the field, and then you look at their bench, and you're just like. What? What? Yeah. Like what is going on? Correct. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's like it's kind of like, you know, he he does change it up, not all the time, but when he does change it up, it works. Like everything that he does, it works. And I was mm. like, to be fair, it would have been surprising if they didn't win it this season, but given how good Arsenal was going, I was just hoping that they would. Mm. But again. Do you are you as amazed as everyone? And do you think it's not gonna stop with Erling Holland in regards to oh. goals? Like breaking Alan Sheard's record. He 34 goals he scored. What did he end up scoring? 36? I think it was 37. 37. Yeah. yeah. Insane. Like, he will not stop. He's just one of those ones that will, like, he'll just keep going and going. Like, I reckon next season he's going to try and break that, his own record yeah. next season. Like, when he's healthy, and I said this to you when we did the double stuff a few weeks ago, when yeah. he's healthy, he is literally unstoppable. Yeah. He is so, so good. It's just unfortunate we haven't really been able to see him on like the international stage to watch the him. World Cup. Yeah, they yeah didn't to watch him play. But he is just, he's that good and he mm. will not stop when he's healthy. When yeah. he's injured, however, if he's injured, he's just like, he Was gets he injured much this season? Injured. Not this season, no. No, he was good when this year. When he was year. last season at Dortmund, Dortmund he's he been was injured, a bit. injured quite a bit, but I don't know whether that's because it was him or whether it was just because like Dortmund's backroom medical stuff. Do you know what's stuff fr- is frustrating about him is he's the type of striker too that doesn't really overly get involved in a lot of the possession. Yeah. So he's more like always mentally switched on for the he's right moment to score, like, which is a nightmare, a nightmare for a defender. Yeah, yeah. He's literally kind of like, he just kind of gives me Ronaldo but better vibes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ronaldo but better. Like, 
Yeah. Do you reckon he's better than Ronaldo? No, well, I mean he scored no, more no, goals like, than his first season. No, no, but like he will. I feel like I feel like he will be. His his statistics are going to be still insane. Only what he's like what twenty one? Get it up. Twenty two. I don't know how old he is, but he's still quite young. So like he's still got quite a long long time and a long period of his career left. His goal to game ratio already is. I think he's. It's at least like what, like no, it's like almost on par with games and goals. Yeah. Like he's scored, scoring the same amount of goals as he's played games in it's his career. Insane, international and club level. Yeah, it's crazy. He's he's. So I don't think we'll ever see anything like him again. No, I, I genuinely believe so that's that. That's what I mean. Like we said that about Messi. We said that about Ronaldo. Like this is true. The, this is the valid this is point. Like the second coming of that. I feel like it's. It's yeah. scary. Yeah, it is. But it's like so cool because watching, especially this season as well, like watching all the young players coming through has been a huge. Hey, Legends, just a quick break in this episode to thank our partners, Dabble, the gambling agency, where you dabble socially and gamble responsibly. Please only bet what you can and are willing to lose. Now, Dabble is one of the great platforms out there. I absolutely love using it. Very similar to Instagram, where you can follow some of the head honchos in the different sports, copy their bets and get some good wins on the board. Now, fortunately for me, I've been working with Dabble for over a year. This year, we are doing a stream every Tuesday night. It's called Jake's Take it's from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., where you can go in the Double app, you can join me. We get guests on every week. We bet on the dogs. We have an absolute ball, and they're talking about sport and cutting up the shop around what's going around town across all codes. So come on down, check it out. Double socially, gamble responsibly, and let's get back into the episode. The only downfall of Man City is their financial fair play stuff. Mm -hmm. That breach, I don't think it will come into effect off this season, but mm -hmm. next season they could be deducted yes. a lot of points. Do you like? Do you have any insight or thoughts around that? I don't have any insight, but I have Usually thoughts. you know. Maybe <laughs> usually I know. Honestly, like, it's a hard one because it's like, realistically, you want there to be consequences for yeah. actions like that. And it's like Juve, for example, they had like 15 points deducted and then- Recently. Yeah. They and then they got them reinstated deducted. and then they got 10 points deducted again <laughs> because they're always doing stupid shit. Yeah. So it's like, you should be getting punished for these things. And it's not like, you know- They've worked it out this season. So I feel like technically it should have been given to them this season. Yeah. I don't really – like what's the well, point yeah, of – like what's the point of giving it to them next season? I agree. That's my view as well. They've I'm won like, the league. Take it you off should them be giving, when it, they giving got it to the them results. now. Exactly yeah. right. Like not even when – yeah, you know, like you guys have worked out that this has been happening this season. You should be taking the points from this season, not from next season. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there because yes. the football should condemn – Realistically though, like I honestly I'm not – I'm not super like I don't want to, I don't think it's gonna happen. Like I don't think the, I think really the issue is, and I could be wrong here, but it doesn't matter how much money your club owns, you can only spend what you profit. Yeah. So they're spending more than they're profiting mm -hmm. is the issue. So if if so, if they are found guilty, which they're forcing to court and yeah. prolonging and all that sort of stuff, they'll get deducted. Yeah. Like they, they won't which get relegated, but they'll it'll be impossible for them to win the league. You say that. Well, yeah. imagine <laughs> 20 points off and like Pep wins it. Fuck off. If <laughs> he does that, I'll stop me? watching football. I'll never watch it again. Yeah, I'll never watch it again. <laughs> Let's go to more local football because the Premier League is still on goal. Actually, no, before we do, relegation battle. Yes. The greatest thing about football and one of the things we don't experience from a Australian sport perspective is promotion and relegation. And, yes. it's, and it's so exciting. Well, now the Premier League's done. All you do is watch the bottom of the table because yeah. people are playing for $200 million to stay mm -hmm. in the Premier League. Yeah. So if they get relegated, it's like a you know, club can really rip a club apart. Yeah. And championships, not a. It's really sad to kind of see the clubs that are in relegation as well. Like you've got Leicester, Leeds, and Southampton. And it's just like, it's really sad. Um, so at this point, and forgive us because we are shooting this a week out from release, but Everton, Leeds, and Leicester. Um, are the teams that can go down? Obviously, Southampton's already gone, but I yeah. think they're all mathematically like those. Nottingham three. Forest pretty safe. Nottingham's, like Nottingham's win, win against on but the yeah, weekend against Leicester Arsenal. And Everton are still like in. If Everton go down, they're building a new stadium next year. They'll have the best stadium in the championship. That's crazy. But like the championship is so good, and you've and got it's hard such to good get clubs out of. in there. It's really hard yeah. to get out. Of. It's the hardest league in the world, I think. Yeah. Like th they're playing more games. It's pretty I high intensity. What, it's pretty physical. Yeah. Like I think I was talking about it the other day. Um, I think, oh no, that was league, league two. I think there's one club and it was like, they had one of the single, one of their players had like 11 yellow cards for the season. Yeah. 11. That's like probably half their appearances. Like some clubs have got like 80, 90 cards, yellow cards for <laughs> yeah, the season. Is this the lower leagues? Yeah. Cause yeah. they play for keeps. 
happens to They're be. playing for like, like their life is, there. This is what I want in the Premier League. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, I'm just fire. Like punch-ons. Punch-ons. <laughs> <laughs> not literally. Cats, that's so inciting violence, everyone. <laughs> no. Not the Unlaced podcast. That's not <laughs> no, us. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's classic 50. <laughs> <laughs> you oh said before you hope Sadio punched the Sadio on the field. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm, actually I'm, 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 putting I'm sounding words in like your mouth. a real victory fan I'm right put, now. So if we, let's just predict our three for relegation. So mm. obviously Southampton's already gone. Southampton's gone. I think, uh, I don't think, I think Everton's going to stay up, you know. They've got Bournemouth though. Yeah, but they did, who'd they beat 5-1? They beat Brighton 5-1 recently. And that's a yeah. big win. So I think maybe there's some sort of momentum there. But I guess so. And I mean, they did way, draw Leicester with Wolves. Leeds, so like it's. it's that You know what I mean? They, they're, they're accumulating. But I just like, the only because like my Aussie bias is like forcing me. I don't want Leicester to go down. With Harry Suter. Yeah. Like yeah. I would like them to have another go. It's strange having a guy that plays for Australia speak fluent Scottish. Yeah, it's like. When crazy. I say, when I say fluent, obviously like it's, it's English, like but accent. he speaks like thus. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, like, it's you watch him. You see him in his mouth. I was like, what is? Going I'm like, on he's there? like, we've done well, well to like po- we've Jason done well Cummings to poach speaks. him. Like what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when play for the soccer, dude. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? It's crazy, isn't it? But you know, I'm all for it because we need all the help yeah. we can get. But um, yeah, I've got a feeling Leicester, Leeds, and Everton are going to go down, uh, and Southampton are going to go down. Everton will stay up. Yeah, I'm hoping that it's going to be Everton, Leeds, and Southampton. Oh, let's hope. We'll see. We'll see how we go. Well, we've got to go to the domestic game, the A-League, obviously. Yes. We both do stuff around the A-League. Absolutely love it. I think you go for Melbourne Victory, right? I am a Victory fan. Oh, so am I. So me inciting violence on this podcast is it's not, not too far-fetched. Yep. It's also not a good, it's not a good look. But well, obviously, yeah, what was well documented this year from mainstream media was the Melbourne Derby where fans ran on the field and Tom Glover got hit with a bucket and it was very bucketed. bad. He got bucketed. Wow. Mm. <laughs> She's memed it in a word. Yeah. So that was a really dark moment in football, but obviously it that was. was off the back of the grand finals being put in Sydney and mm-hmm. fans losing their say and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But ever since that game, victory season without doubt on the field went down. I think just the whole season, it's it just been disaster. Shit. It's been disastrous. It hurts. It hurt the club. Cause I know people within I the think club, like when victory aren't victory used to is that. doing, doing, awful it hurts the league as well because they mm. are one of the biggest like they are the biggest club in the league mm. so when they're not doing well it hurts the league too definitely so like i think victory's the most the important club the league, to the like league. they want them doing well mm. but i think yeah it was between like the performance was just not there like it was just shambles and then that grand finals decision like that was just the final nail in the coffin for victory supporters to be like, well, honestly though, like I'm not even going to sit here and call those people victory supporters because like you are not supporting Australian football yeah. if you think that that's the right way to go about yeah. something. Like yeah. if you th- honestly think that by storming the pitch and assaulting a player is going to solve anything, you aren't a supporter of football in this country. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy. It definitely, it's the worst thing that could it's have. It's just it's a, it didn't help it to it take a, like into a million field. steps back. Yeah, the whole club was put on the back foot because yeah. of those individuals. Not even just the club, the league in general. Like, oh, yeah. no, one wants to, no one wants to watch Australian football now because, like, why would you? Yeah, and they should know, like, the media jumps on that in, mm. from, from a football perspective. Yeah, yeah. They don't, They're not going to jump on Sam Kerr winning football no, writers of course not. player of the year. They're going to jump on that. Yeah. So you can't give them anything. No, you can't. Yeah, it's a shame. I, I'm, I mean, I was hurt for the the. the the pure fans of the club and obviously the yeah. club itself. But I actually had high hopes for victory this season because the year before we won the Australia won Cup the and, yeah, were a game away. Yeah. We had one bad game in the second leg against yeah. Western United yeah. and missed the grand final. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And we, I think we went on like a 16-game unbeaten streak last year. Last season was so, next level. But I think, again, it's just one of those things where, like, there's been zero consistency. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem with victory because it's like with City, they've had the same squad for, like, you know, a number of seasons now. They've had, you know, albeit a few changes, they've had the same squad. Like, integral squad has been pretty much the same. Victory squad has changed that many times over the last couple of seasons. Since we last won the league, it has changed every single season. We've had players come, we've had players go. Like, I think the biggest thing for us was losing Jason Davidson. Yeah, that was a, that was a big loss. Yeah, huge. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't think the replacement was like, anywhere near his Brendan level. Brendan Hamill as well, losing him was really big too. Rojas I think hurt. I Rojas think too. hurt us as well, big yeah. time. He's gone yeah. to Colo Colo. Colo Colo in Chile. My club in Chile. Does he play there, really? Yeah. Wow. Is, he, is he like a big money kind of stuff there or no? I mean, it's decent. Decent. I'd assume it's more than he's here. He's a player, Marco yeah. Rojas. Yeah. He, I mean, for, I think he was a massive loss of victory. Yeah. I think there's some of the signings... Um, they didn't. They didn't better the team as such. I, besides Damien De Silva, he was a yeah. big player. Oh, incredible. He, Bruno ran his socks off for the yeah. club, but Bruno was like injuries too for the club didn't help. 
like Marshan and uh, Jake Brimmer. I think also big another losses. big thing too, it's like you can see with the league, the clubs that invest in their youth are doing so well. Like Adelaide, for example, even Sydney, they do really well investing in their youth. Mm. Even City as well, like you've got Jordan Boss, he's what, like 20, 21 years old, he's going to Belgium and he's got like the, he's broken the record of transfer like a transfer fee yeah, in Australia. It's crazy like, when you think of the players that have come out of Australia. That's what I mean. Like it's clubs like that that actually invest in their youth that actually get something done and I think that's kind of where victories mix, missed the mark recently mm. as of recent because like when we did win the league, we had a lot of young players in that squad mm. and like we were investing in our youth and I think since then it's kind of dropped off a bit. Like I don't know what's happened, like I don't know, but I think they've kind of missed the mark with that in the sense that like you're not investing in your youth so you don't have anyone coming up into the club. Like you don't have anyone that bleeds for the club. You've yeah. got people like obviously yeah, like Jake Brimmer and Lee Broxham and things like that, but you haven't got that that thing of like what the A-League used to be like. You'd have people that would bleed for their clubs. You've yeah. got people now that just come in so they can go. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I get you. Uh, so it's a really good point. Um, and one of the teams that, as you just touched on, Geordie Boss and, and other players from Melbourne City, yeah. they've done it again in regards to dominating the league, like mm -hmm. making – really sort of separate, separating yeah. themselves from everyone in regards to their broods. I mean, the signing of Leckie was, that came through this season. Tilio was back on. Jamie McLaren broke highest goal scorer record in the A-League in yeah. history. Shout out, Jamie. I actually have to take Jamie. Jamie to, I have to take him to Brockpool. No way. We made, a, we made a bet. <laughs> we made a bet before the start of the season. And I think I posted on my socials, but because um, I grew up with Jamie. Oh. Um, we used to play in like the state teams and stuff together and all that sort of stuff. How does so, that make you feel? Um, <laughs> well, it was bad, but then like he went on a podcast and said how good I was once. So oh, then that made me feel that's better. that's so nice. He's no, such a nice guy. He's a legend. He's really come from a great family. Yeah. He's a twin brother, Donnie and all that sort of, Donnie was actually the better player growing up. I saw a video. Yeah, they, that clip's like they, coming they up, but like that, yeah. everyone said, it's like very yeah. unanimous. Well, that's crazy though to think that like Jamie's Jamie that worked, good. Jamie had to work at it. Donnie was like gifted. Yeah, just good. Yeah, Donnie was like special. <laughs> Um, but anywho, so yeah, we made a bet because I, I think we were talking, I was like wishing him luck for the season and I was like... Um, it's like, how many do you have to get this season? He said like 22. I was like, well, if you do, oh, how many do you have to get to break the record? He said like 20 something. I was like, well, if you do it this season, I'll take you to Rockpool. And he said, if I don't, I'll take you to Nobu. And he fucking did it with like <laughs> five games left, like easily. And he's and got I'm a mural like, painted of himself. And, he, and, he burnt, and then I posted and he's like, but he's tagging Rockpool, like we're coming and shit. Oh so, my God. Yeah. So sick. I actually have to uphold him to that. But yeah. that, we said when the season's done, obviously, which will be That's so good. after the grand finals. That. So yeah, special team, but uh, Admirably yeah. about um, Melbourne City and their structure and their setup and their club culture was a lot of people have gone over the fact that Kiz Norbo left mid-season, which is a massive change. He went to the Yeah, mind you, top. he's not had a good season over No, he could be back soon by the look of it. Yeah. But, um, but I always think that was but like one of those fair, things. that was already had. a sinking ship where he went. So. He, it's like one of those things as a young coach, like you got to take it, but mm. like it's probably going to explode. Yeah. But like it is what it is. Like at the end of the day, they would have gotten relegated this season anyway. Yeah. But we don't dress. Who, who who across the A League this season was like your surprise packet that did well as a team, as a club? That Central Coast. Central Coast. Yeah. yeah good call. Yeah. yeah. Because like given the last couple of seasons, like they've been pretty horrific. So for them to, you know, make it to finals is huge. Yeah, massive. And I can't believe they did with losing Qual as well. Yeah. Mm. To be fair. Quoll is such a good player, but he wasn't a starter. No, nah, he was only a bench player. So he's like Irukunda, in yeah. a sense, for Adelaide. But Eric, but like you know what I mean? Like these are players that like come off the bench, but they make such a difference. Yeah. But like, yeah, he wasn't a starter, so it he would was be a, so it was a handy huge for the grand loss. Final. Yeah, hundred percent. Bring him back, just like one game. He, he could, he's the type of guy that could make a difference. Yeah. Like that's he why is, he's so he, good. But he is. He's those, he's one of those players that comes off the bench and makes a huge difference. Yeah. But he wasn't like in that integral squad of like you know come dog and all that. And it's like, it's been really good to see them do so well. Like Sam Silvera, for example, he kind of at the start of the season, like you ask anyone in this country who that was, they probably wouldn't know who it was. Yeah. And now it's like, he's done so well towards the back end of the season that like hundred percent, he's going to be one of those players that makes a difference in this final. Yeah. Mm. Like he's probably going to explode. Yeah. But um, like it is what it is. Like at the end of the day, they would have gotten relegated this season anyway, yeah. but we digress. Who, who, in, who across the A-League this season was like your surprise packet that did well as a team, as a club? That Central Coast. Central Coast, yeah. yeah. Good call. Yeah. yeah. Because, like, given the last couple of seasons, like, they've been pretty horrific. So for them to, you know, make it to finals is huge. Yeah, massive. And I can't believe they did with losing Quoll as well. Yeah. Mm. To be fair, Quoll is such a good player, but he wasn't a starter. 
No, nah, he was only a bench player. So he's like Irakunda, in yeah. a sense, for Adelaide. But Eric, but like you know, what I mean, like these are players that like come off the bench, but they make such a difference. Yeah. But like, yeah, he wasn't a starter, so it he would was be a, so it was a handy. Huge for the grand loss, final. yeah, hundred percent. Bring him back, just like one game. He, he alone. Could, he's the type of guy that could make a difference. Yeah. Like that's he why is, he's so he, good. But he is. He's he's one of those players that comes off the bench and makes a huge difference. Yeah. But he wasn't like in that integral squad of like you know, come dog and all that. And it's like it's been really good to see them do so well. Like Sam Silvera, for example, he kind of at the start of the season like. You ask anyone in this country who that was, they probably wouldn't know who it was. Yeah. And now it's like he's done so well towards the back end of the season that like 100% he's going to be one of those players that makes a difference in this final. Yeah. He, he resurrected his career this season because mm. he went overseas, yeah. young, came back, didn't work out. That's generally kind of- Well, that's how it works. That's why everyone's like real nervous about Quall well, like, and even all these others. Um, oh my God, I've gone blank. What's his name? The one that was at Man City when the, then ended on loan and like came back to MacArthur. Oh my god! Why that? I've gone blank. MacArthur, Daniel, something. Anyway, he you brought it up. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to like find <laughs> yeah, it now because I pause. fully like I know we'll exactly that. who this is. <laughs> I've gone boy. blank. <laughs> oh yeah, Danny boy from Man City. Who signed no, for Man City and got loaned out back to MacArthur? What the fuck? Should I know that? Yeah, well, he no, he didn't get loaned back. He um, he so Man City signed him, then they loaned him out straight away. Wait, are we live here? Are we paused. Okay, pause. Yeah. Oh, it's Daniel sick. Azani. Oh, Azani. Man, man, man City. Yeah, bro. Oh, man, man City bought him after the after the last World Cup. He went on loan to like all these different places and it just didn't work out. So he's back here. Oh, my God. All right. You tell me when. We'll start that bit again. And when you're Three, two, one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Where yeah, was yeah, I? I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, Daniel Azani. No. Like he went overseas and yeah. it just kind of his career didn't really wow. take off, but he's come back and he's done so well here. Mm. But it's kind of just one of those things of like, you can be really, really good here, but you're like a, a big fish in a small pond. And then yeah. you go overseas and it's, it's like- a, it's, a, it's so hard. It's hard. It's, it's hard to really crack hard. it over there. So but like I spoke major to, respect to people, like to players who can crack it over there. Well, I spoke so hard. to Fahid Ben Kalfa about this because he's doing work from a football age of second. And I asked him specifically, I'm like, if you're a young player and you've had a good season, you get an offer from Europe, should you go? Because we see so many bounce yeah. back. And he's like, you have to go. Yeah. That, that's his opinion. Because he's like- I mean, you can't not, you know what I mean? Well, like, that's the thing. It's just one of those riggers. That's why I yeah. admire Matthew Lecky. Like Lecky went there in like 10 years yeah. in Germany. Like tough. That is like a war zone yeah. to play every week. And he yeah. did. And I'm like, that's why it is really tough. And I think the mentality aspect to it is where it's, a it's lot of us fall down. Yeah. It's not so much on ability. It's the mental side because mm. it's so difficult. It is. So yeah. much competition, so much pressure. And it's just pressure. one of those things like as a young player to go overseas, to have the opportunity to go overseas mm. and play for even like a third tier club in Europe is still like next level. Yep. The facilities that they've got, the amount of money up. that's put in it. And just overall, like the amount of work that you do and the amount of development that you do when you're over there as a player is huge. Mm. Like it's not, it's not, unfortunately you can't compare it to here. Yeah. In saying though, we've had players that have come here from overseas. Like for example, I think Joe Lolly said it once where like he used to play for Nottingham Forest. He's playing for Sydney now. And he's like, you know, the level of football here, it's not like a huge difference from, you know, yeah. over there. But well, it's good to know. It's, it's there's certain there. levels of like, you know, the facilities and all that kind of stuff that doesn't meet that. Yeah. So I think it's always a really good experience. Which probably to go takes away from the football. Mm. as well like if those things you're, you're naturally going to be in a better position to play better Absolutely. all sorts of things like that one of the clubs that I thought overachieved um, in a similar fashion to Central Coast and they kind of do it every year with their young players is my former club in Adelaide I love so, Adelaide so yeah they just create with the like the touch of Craig Goodwin and their young superstars they that, are such a good like they're, they're a cash cow for incredible they're a cash cow they're going to get so many players bought in the future and they're going to keep making money yeah and like they keep Nesta, sustaining Nesta, themselves Nesta, like Aaron that. Kunda, for example, like oh. how he's like supposedly going to buy in, but then he's come out and said like, no, I'd want to spend like at least another season or two he needs to, to develop. Play 90 minutes every yeah, week. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And I think that could potentially be where Garen Quall may have gone a little bit astray. Mm. However, he's done he's done better than I think people thought he, he would. He just scored, didn't he? He just scored the, the other yeah, day. Yeah. The equalizer in so the last minute like, against Rangers. You either leave too early and you just like completely ruin it and you come back and it's like, what was the point? Or you kind of give it a bit of time. Sometimes it works. I think with Quall it's going to work. I think, I think so as well. I feel something like he's very, stick. very adaptable. 
Yeah. I think it's just a matter of like. Seems like a good kid, confident. Finding your footing and finding your way. Yeah. You know? he just need he needs some love from mm. the right club and he'll, he'll get there yeah. for sure. The, before we go into the grand final, which we're going to break down, I felt this, this year, particularly from a passion and fire point of view, the Sydney Derby was back. You're probably a bit closer to it to me because you spend time in Sydney with yeah. work and so forth. But did you feel that energy, like the, the fire between Western Sydney really and Sydney? I was really upset was, that, I ne- that I actually didn't get the chance to go to any of the Sydney derbies uh, this season. Look, they looked intense. Because they were huge. Like they were oh, insane and I wish that I would have been there because that is the atmosphere that's been missing Correct. from the league the for Derby such a long fire. time. Yep. Yeah, it's been missing. And it's, again, Western Sydney is one of those clubs that when Western Sydney is not doing well, like it's like victory, Western Sydney and Sydney. When they're not doing well in the league, the league kind of suffers. But when those clubs are doing well, Western Sydney's kind of, made a comeback this season, mm. which I don't think anyone really kind of expected either, considering that it's kind of like the same boat as Central Coast. They haven't really done all that well recently. So making that comeback has been huge for them. Yeah. And the atmosphere is insane. Yeah. And honestly, I was expecting them to get into the finals. Well, they, I've, I looked at their – I think they played uh, out of the 26 games, 19 were un, undefeated. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the third or second highest in the league. So they didn't like they're hard to they're hard to beat in short. Yeah. They only lost like six or seven games. They have all the other games they accumulate a point. So yeah, I reckon they beat Sydney at what every time they, they were my, they were my upset because yeah. they should they had a good enough squad. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I think it was just that game, like that that yeah, I don't know. Sydney like, were just turned up. They just you know? yeah, but they weren't it just they were playing <laughs> like Yo-yo football. It was just not it. Like that is not the side that we've seen all season. Mm. So I don't know what yo-yo football. That's yeah, that's, that's what a, that's we like call a Ted that's Lasso tactic. Sadi ball. You know, uh, oh, it's your sadi. Yeah, no. that's what we like to call it. Sadi <laughs> right. ball. That's Sadie. kind of what it was because it was like they're very. It was like super like not consistent with what they've done all season. So it's like what's going on here? Like I don't know what Rudin thought was going on, but yeah, it was shame. Just the one, yeah. Well, that's the problem with the with the structure of the finals one off game as we saw with victory last year we touched on no it you can't you can't not turn up in the finals yeah. that's why everyone that's why i always get nervous with melbourne city because it's happened to them before even though they're always there they dominate seasons and it just takes one off day and you can be out mm-hmm. and obviously we're used to that with like afl and yeah. nrl and all these other sports but from a football perspective it's a tough pill to swallow Absolutely. the two teams that now have made the grand final central coast of course melbourne city yes do you have a favorite for that um, no, not really. Yeah, I you honestly think it's really close. Oh, like I feel like it's just I feel like City's just gonna do them. Yeah. But I really, really want Central Coast to do it. Well, like I think, I want I think them. now it's in Sydney. Something's like I think it's now it's evened Something's out the like, game. Well also because it's like it's technically Melbourne's home game. Yeah, but it's, but Central it's not Coast is like Central but you Coast can drive to the ground from Central Coast. You know? there. Like it's gonna be yeah, I'm interested to see what the atmosphere is going to be like because I don't feel well, it's going to be Well, they're too smally. They're two good. very impressive clubs on the field, but they have probably the least fans. Yes, on both especially sides. like City as well. Like, and with the whole thing of like we don't want like the finals in Sydney, blah blah blah. Like, I don't think many people will travel, unfortunately, mm. from Melbourne anyway. Mm. Central Coast probably like they what they filled out that stadium last week. That was huge. Yeah, like that atmosphere was insane, and that stadium is so beautiful as well. But I think yeah, it'll be. It'll feel more like it's a Central Coast home game. I I I really hope from Melbourne City. So I've got a lot of friends in the Melbourne City squad, so I hope they win. Mm. But I think they will. I think they're too strong. As a victory supporter, I just refuse to admit it. Well, yeah, I know, but I'm, I've got so many friends. That's ridiculous. Mm. So I feel like one, I couldn't say they're it, but just, they're just so good. It's like it, oh, you have to stop. You have to stop Matthew Lecky. You have to stop Marco Tilio. Mm. You have to stop. Jamie McLaren, mm-hmm. then you go behind them and it's like they've got arguably the best midfield in the league with Barisha and- They've got the best one in the league, let's be Van real. de Ven, uh, what a, it's just a scary team. <laughs> then they've got the best left back, the best young kid. It's like, keep going Like, here. sorry. Keep going Can here. you guys so, go? Like, go home. Yeah. And I love the Vitasic family, so shout out Dario and Rado. They're good, good people. But uh, I, yeah, I think it's theirs to lose. I, yeah. They will be so pissed off if they don't win it. Yeah. And sometimes this can have a reverse effect on you when- you're expected to win it. Do you know mm. what I mean? I mean, they were expected to win it back you get, when You kind of psych blue. yourself out almost. So Central Coast, in my opinion, have nothing to lose, nothing mm. to fear. Because so if they lose, they still made just the final. They should just take the game on yeah. from the get-go. And but really if they win, they've won it. Whereas well, yeah. City, like, they have to win it. Like, yeah. there's no other option. Yeah. But this, this is what the final is. So sometimes it can go to eight. If you had to predict a scoreline. I feel like it might go to Pens. Pens? One all. Oh, one I hope all. so. Who scores? Come Dog and McLaren? 
Say yeah. come dog, Jamie, uh, come dog. Jason Cummings, for those <laughs> that don't for know who that, that is. He calls himself aren't that. well so. versed in yeah. the Australian yeah, lingo. Yeah, just so there's no miscommunication. Yeah, that's what he calls himself, a <laughs> come dog. Yeah. They even had like name sets like for the World Cup kits. Like yeah. you could get come dog on the back he, of your soccer kit. Again, I think I mentioned uh, Sam Kerr, but Jason Cummings on a podcast, wow. Oh. Oh, it'd be hilarious. He could get cancelled if he came on one, though. So we'd have to be, there'd be a bit of editing, but he's a good, he's a really good guy. <laughs> You'd have to chop it up. Yeah, the whole thing. A couple thing. times. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think Melbourne City will win 3 1. I think it could be right, convincing. Okay. So Interesting. we will see the grand finals coming up uh, this weekend after the episode is out. So um, we'll Get see if we're up. right. It's going to be a big game, big game for the uh, the league for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, going to be watching it from home, but yeah, nonetheless. Thanks. Thanks. FFA for Football Australia, yeah. But, well, it's a short-term thing. Hopefully it generates money because it's it's hurt interest from, like, a Melbourne perspective. It sucks having to go play. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, from an AFL perspective, this is what they've always done. Yeah. If you play for Sydney or West but Coast, you've got to like play at the MCG. You've always done it, so people are used to that. Whereas, mm. like, now it's like you're just kind of putting that change in when it's never been done before. So, obviously, of course, people aren't going to be happy with it. I'm not happy with it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, it is what it is now. They've made that decision. They need money for the league. Like, It is common, uh, though, in football to have a neutral ground as, like, the final. But do you know what I think the, the issue is? It's that it's Sydney. I feel like they could have done it anywhere else and it would have been, like, it would have been, people would have cracked would have the it? shit. But it, logistically, Sydney is probably the smartest place to do it. Mm. But for everyone else, it's like, why are you doing it in Sydney? Yeah, yeah, it sucks. APL, I'm going to, like, okay. Yeah. Where else are you going to do it? Like, well, now Central Coast, it's almost it like a home game. You could do it in Northern Territory, considering that they don't have a team. <laughs> That's neutral. <laughs> Tasmania. That, that is outrageous. Well, to be fair, they are building, well, they're in the plans of building a stadium down in Tasmania. So if they oh. did that and they, but again, like, it's just. Tazzy's trying hard everywhere. Every, I don't think people would ever be happy with a decision like I, that. I, so. if I, I wouldn't want to play for him. As a player, I'm just being honest. I don't want to live in Tasmania. Tasmania. I know, I'm sure it's beautiful, but unless I grew up there, I don't want to move there to be a professional athlete. Yeah, no. If I can play in Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane or Perth, I'd probably choose that. Yeah. Or even Adelaide. I played there, so yeah, I should say yeah. Adelaide first. <laughs> should say Adelaide first. Adelaide, Whoops. I love you. <laughs> Had great years there. Love you guys. Love you, Adelaide. Um, <laughs> let's go into the Champions League final. Yes. The biggest game in football after the World Cup. I'd say the biggest trophy and mm-hmm. accolade as a player. There's always legend status immortality that comes yeah. from this game. Like I still watch finals from like the early 2000s, <laughs> like just watching moments that like changed my life. Yeah. And I'm like, that guy's still a legend. Um, Inter Milan versus Man City, big game. You are a bit more closer to City art than me. Yes. Are you surprised Inter Milan made the Champions League final? Slightly. I think um, they didn't. They've been a bit, like, inconsistent in the league this season. Like, they've been lucky that Juve copped that points deduction because now they're kind of – I think they're in third place at the moment. So they are still in those Champions League spots if they don't win. But, yeah, they've been – I think, again, they're one of those ones that's kind of gone under the radar because, like, everyone thought they were doing shit, but they actually weren't doing as bad as what it looked like. Mm. Like, they've actually not done too bad. I think they haven't – They've got the knock on AC. Yeah, I 100%. thought AC. I thought AC, AC was like they just the wheels fell off. But they beat Napoli twice. Napoli won the CDR, obviously, with an incredible season. But I thought AC Milan had knocked Napoli off twice. They knocked them out of the Champions League. I thought and they were they were, were going to be the yeah. favorite, and Inter just steamrolled them early in game one. I just uh, Italian football is next level, and anyone who doesn't watch Italian football, I suggest, I highly suggest that Italian you go do it. Italian back. Italian football. Is where it's fucking at. <laughs> really? It used to be La Liga, and I'm like the biggest Barca fan why, ever. Why but is it, why Italian is it, why football, is it it's, it's just like so entertaining to watch. And I know that a lot of people are like, oh, it's really not as far as like, but it's Italy we're talking about. Like, we're talking about AC Milan. We're talking about Inter Milan. We're talking about like Napoli just won the league for the first time in 30 years. Yeah, it's crazy. And yeah. they've been partying for like four weeks straight. Yeah, they, but they've like, just done that. The mafia's and the amount Napoli. of people, yeah, but that's whatever. what they'll be partying for the next six months. Yeah, they'll be partying for I mean? the next six years. What are you yeah, talking yeah. about? <laughs> like, like, that's it. it. Like you know, you talk to Napoli supporters and they're like, oh, you can take me now." Like yeah. that's it. That's yeah. all I wanted in life. You can take me now. Yeah, that's all that. Yeah, correct. But Italian football, there's just something about it. I don't know. It's just like it's kind of what I feel like La Liga has been lacking in mm-hmm. the last couple of years. You know, La Liga used to be like that league where it was like, "Oh yeah," there's so much flair and like it was incredible. And I think the way that they play football in Italy is. 
classic football, like yep. the football that you used to watch when you were younger, kind of thing. Well, they've got uh, they've got obviously AC and Inter went to the semi final, then Roma's in uh, a they've European got three final, clubs, like three you know, Italian clubs yeah. in the European final. Thank you. So they they are back being competitive again, but is Man City going to be way too strong for them? I mean, Again, I'm always one of those ones that's just wildly optimistic and I really would love for Inter to do Man City. Just because like I just don't want Man City to win anything. Yeah. I this love is, Pep, this is but the I golden don't love chalice. Pep with this Man is City. like what's been and the Inter, hardest thing to Inter, get. Like Rom, big Rom winning a Champions League big Rom. and then going back to Chelsea. <laughs> huge. Do you reckon he starts? Because Jekyll's been starting too. I mean, like he probably he's gonna play a part. To be fair, like they're pretty, they've got a pretty interchangeable front line. Yeah. They, like, they do. They change all the time. The, it's you and know, that's the thing start. with it. That's but that's what I mean. Like they they're kind of similar. I'm not going to say the same. Man City. Man City's cooked. But they're, cooked. They're, I've said that so many cooked. times on this podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. Jesus. <laughs> they're kind of similar in a way that like they are very fluid with the plays that they've got, and they can make those changes, and they can you know put Romelu Lukaku up front, or they can put like you know it's they've got Tuka Correa, like arguably the most handsome man in world football. But, you know, like... Who, who do you class as the most handsome man in world football? If is, you had to pick am one. Am I allowed to say it? I don't know. Jude Bellingham, but I don't want people to think that Jude, like... Oh, he's get it. He's attainable. He's young. Yeah, but he's like, I'm 23 years old. How old is he? 20? Like 20? Yeah, that love something. him. God bless, but... <laughs> love him. He's a good looking mates. guy. Yeah. But, I um, hope, man, you sign him. I don't. But not to... Not to not to t- take some Champions League final. I just, oh, I'm sad. I don't want him to leave Dortmund. Anyway, back to the point at hand. I digress. Yeah. I think that Inter could possibly like just pull up wow. just some mad sneak attack and be like, hey, bitches, we're winning the fucking Champions League. Well, that's their, their game plan will be to probably play off the counter attack. Sneak they're not going to control they're gonna, they're gonna the game. They're going to just sneak up on them and just like surprise them, I feel. Yeah. I think, and I hope they do. I think Man City's going to win. I just, I don't also, know. Also, they just won the Coppa Italia as well. I almost forgot. Oh yeah, they did too. Yes, yeah, so they've so already like, won. They've already won this year. So finals, they're not they've scared won of. Coppa Italia. They can't like. They're not winning the league, unfortunately. I mean, it's not unfortunate because I don't care. But I really would love for them. to So, win are you saying league. Inter's going to win? I think so. Yep. Wow, you've got to be one of the few people in the world that believe that. Um, I'm a romantic. Well, I, I mean, look, it'll I'm be. I'm delusional, but I'm a romantic. Break for Man City because they've never won the Champions I know. League. Pep and like, it would be nice for Pep to win the Champions League, but like. With Man City, I don't want you winning the Champions League. Go somewhere else. But I, I think they will, just because Fair of enough. their squad, Honestly, their, their log- run of logically games. Logically speaking, and like looking at statistically, it's in their favour. Yeah, but I think I think Erling Haaland, De Bruyne, they break down. It's going to be a cagey game. I think Inter park the bus to an extent, play off the counter. Man City would dominate possession, but they've just got too many golden yeah. pieces. If the question for Man City is like, who do you start? Like outside 100%. of how, like, do you play Bernardo? Do you play Mares? Do you even start? Do you play Harlan Grealish like, in form? Do you play Foden? Like, what a good problem to have. Yeah. Oh, it's so, incredible. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, damn it. Do you I, know? Do, oh. And then get to go to that bench like the 60th minute if it's nil nil yeah. or one one. Like, it's bench just and scary. Like, you get to pick some of the best players in Europe. Yeah, sick. They should. That's why they should win because yeah. they've got those headaches and they've got that I solution. I feel like the only reason I think I want in- Inter to win is because I feel like it's just so not that robotic thing of like Man City. Yeah. And it's like they have, I feel like they've just got it. I feel like they've got something in them that will allow them to do it. Like I feel like they're going to just pull out some stupid performance and it's just going to work. We're gonna and clip, they're going to do clip it. this up if Inter win. I, I hope so. I hope they do. It if that, if yeah. that happens because you're pretty bullish on it. Let's have it. Let's go uh, <laughs> scoreline predictions before we wrap up. What do you think? Ooh, I feel like I don't think it's going to be like a very high scoring game. Yeah. But I feel like it could be like a 2-1 kind of scenario. Okay. So Inter, obviously. Yeah. I'm going to go. Inter's not very good at clean sheets. So. I might go extra time Man City win. Right. Okay. Yeah, like some sort of fairy tale shit oh, that they always that, seem like, to do. Are going to do like a double? Honestly, I'm oh so God, bad yeah. at it. Yeah. you. Yeah. I'm so bad. I didn't want to say it to your face. No, no. You're not I, great at no, I am so bad. Yeah. Because like- When you put Jeremy Cameron four plus goals in the multi- It was, was an like, accident. <laughs> I wasn't meant to. And then I realized <laughs> like, after I did bold. it- No, I realized after I did it and I was like, oh my God, I was meant to do him for two. And it did four. And he didn't even score one. And I was like to my dad, I was like, dad, I'm actually like, I need to leave. Because I went to that game with my dad and I was just like, I can't deal with this. Oh, we should definitely do some joint football soccer ones. Handy. Because then I can help you and you can help me because yeah. you know more about other leagues. 
Um, like my footy tipping is generally like my, my footy betting is generally not that bad, but I don't know. I've just been really unlucky. Yeah. Well, sometimes it shifts. I've gone through bad periods and like, boom, start with out of nowhere. <laughs> dogs. So, yeah. The dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct. <laughs> well, Kat, I got to thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank we broke down A-League, Premier League, the Champions League final. Great chat. Our predictions cooked. We're cooked. Yeah. Everything's cooked. <laughs> yeah. Um, but thank you guys for listening in. We'll be back next week. Kat, thank you so much for Thanks coming for on the show. Thanks for having me. It. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed. Definitely. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you.